Hello traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the Week Ahead video for January 21st, 2018 and I want to thank you all for listening in this week. Um, I, I want to also uh, welcome and uh, thank you guys for the support for those of you that took advantage of the New Year's offer uh, from last week and you started using Forex Analytics, joined us in the chat rooms. It's really nice to have you part of the Forex Analytics family and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that I get a chance to chat with so many of you throughout the course of the day in our private chat room. So for those of you that have just uh, started with us, welcome. All right, now for, um, for you guys that are listening in, kind of looking ahead into next week, um, obviously things are gonna, things are changing pretty rapidly as we get into the week. Um, but if you want to stay on top of everything as it's released and as it's happening and, and get analysis pushed to you, make sure you, uh, you register and sign up for Forex Analytics. And if you do, you uh, download the mobile app and try that out for your first 10 days. It's only a dollar. So give it a whirl. And once you do that and you sign up, you'll log in and it's going to look a lot like this. Um, but as I was saying, next week, uh, and actually by the time that you're listening to this video, things might have dramatically changed. Uh, first and foremost, we're dealing with a shutdown of the U.S. government, which in, in all actuality, I, I want to say it's not a very big deal uh, for, um, it, it's more political posturing than anything, uh, kind of influences uh, certain parts of the government, very short term, but there's a lot of furloughs and, you know, the, those people end up getting paid, but some productivity slips a little bit, depending on how long this, uh, this takes. And, uh, it seems to me that the politicians will probably come to some sort of resolution and get some stopgap funding, um, <clears throat> here in the next, you know, coming days. And it, it, it could even happen before the market opens on Monday, the, the U.S. stock markets. But uh, I, I think that the markets are going to be fairly, um, uh, you know, nonchalant about it. But you never know what can can topple a market when you are at uh, very extended levels, especially when you talk about the S&P and the rally that we've seen. Um, we're, we're at you know we're we're beyond major fibs and uh we're obviously very overbought you can see in relative strength it's uh ridiculous uh levels that hasn't stopped the market um being overbought we just become more overbought -er. but there there probably is going to be some sort of catalyst that 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 pushes the market into a a near term high um but I don't know what that is. And maybe it is next week. We don't know. And maybe this maybe this uh, government shutdown lasts for two weeks, three weeks. As you guys know, no matter where you're listening in from, whether you're listening in from the Netherlands or Japan or, or right here in the United States, we all are pretty aware that there's a lot of uh, political issues here in the United States. Uh, you have... Uh, you have one half of the government that's pushing in one direction, and the other half of the you know uh, of American government is uh, trying to push the other direction, and um, maybe we we uh, we are at um, a stalemate for a while uh, as uh, each one is trying to push their legislative agendas, and the longer it drags out, the more that we are at risk of uh, of of um, you know having longer term implications in the U.S. equity markets, the dollar, um, so on and so forth. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the dollar, and then I want to talk about what else is happening over the weekend. Here's the dollar index, and uh, you, you can see this is a that this is a daily, uh, yeah, this is a daily chart. Um, here's a weekly chart, and you can kind of see what the what the dollar looks like and and um, longer term aspects of the dollar. I've, I have read a lot of different accounts of, uh, of people looking back on l past shutdowns and uh, how the dollar has fared. Keep in mind that the dollar has already come into a lot of pressure over the last uh, well, over the last year, but really over the last few weeks uh, going into December and into the uh, into the beginning of the year. But I'm, I'm going to give you a, 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 a dynamic chart that I can show some importance of uh, like I, I called the support zone. And if you use Forex analytics, uh, you, you see this chart, not necessarily this chart, but the daily chart every day as I, I'm updating uh, the basic technical analysis. But what we're coming into is we're coming into um, the bottom of the support zone. And you can see this, it, it was really a breakout point here from uh, 2009. 
and um, you can see it's been a big level of contention for all sorts of you know obviously many years and that's at the 90 level and you can see that we also have 127 percent extension that comes in at uh 89 i think that's 89 86 or 89 80s and that is a realistic objective but you know if i was short the dollar which just so you guys know i i, I don't have any dollar positions on i was a little i have a lot of cross rates going um but or a couple of cross rates going rather but I, I was unsure of what's going to happen with the dollar going into this weekend, so I shored up all my uh, dollar positions. But if I was short the dollar, I'd be a little concerned um, that we're coming into some pretty key, what I would consider key support. And uh, one thing that you might notice here is a very divergent relative strength at this point. Um, so as we extend further, you know, relative strength can worsen and we can end up puncturing these lows and really pushing down towards like the low 80s. But if we start to find some sort of foothold in the market uh, here in the next couple of days or the beginning of the week, what I'm actually really looking for is I'm looking for a move back above uh, 91. You can see we closed below 91. It was a breakdown point over here. And so as long as we stay below 91, I'm not interested in being long the dollar, but if for some reason we get back above 91, I, have, I, I would assume there's a lot of dollar stops that are above there, which obviously are gonna bleed into other pairs. Now, um, when I say bleed in other pairs, if you guys didn't catch it, there are, if you looked at like the Euro dollar at the end of the week, and this is the daily chart for Friday, we had a shooting star here. You can see that right there, that daily candle. Look at the pound. The pound also, um, you know, th this is a, a shooting star as well, right at the end of the week. Um, does that mean that the dollar is set to strengthen? Well, that depends and that depends a lot on the other key event that's happening uh this weekend is we have the um the the the, the basically a german vote to see if uh angela merkel is going to keep her majority or not uh and and if she doesn't is she going to you know settle for a minority government which she's been strongly opposing um or will she actually uh you know, go into, um, go into a, another uh, snap election, which I don't know if she wants to take on that risk. She might settle for the lesser two evils and have a minority government. But for, if for some reason the, uh, the vote does fail on Sunday, and, and by the time you guys watch this video, we may already have the news, but everybody's expected the vote to pass. And, and that's the base case scenario. And I think that the Euro dollar could actually have a bit of a recovery at the open. We might, you know, rally back towards 122.50 or maybe 123 because that's widely priced in. But if for some reason uh, that vote fails, we could be trading at 121 or 120 by the end of the week next week. And that's why I have to go back to this dollar index and, and tell you guys, if, 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 if that happens and the Euro takes a fall it's going to have a big influence on the dollar index it's going to have the dollar index probably spike back above 91 and that's going to influence a lot of currency pairs not just the euro dollar like i said the pound could see a reversal you, you look at like the aussie dollar you know the aussie dollar is obviously pretty extended here there's another shooting star we have a nice very parabolic channel that channel breaks you know it's at, at uh 79 let's call it 79 70 79 50, you know, we break through there, uh, you know, we could trade 100 pips lower without much of an issue just on a retracement. Um, so there's a risk of the dollar reversing. And, 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 I, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, most people uh, that I've read over the weekend, because of the government shutdown are coming in guns blazing, shorting the dollar. But if the German political situation gets a little dicey Sunday night, and go, going into the beginning of the week, dollar bears may be um, you know caught off guard, and 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 we might see the dollar spike a little bit. Now, uh, one one more dollar pair I want to uh, bring to your attention is really the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. This the dollar yen is is in a situation where I, I think because of uh, the way it's been acting regarding bonds and way that the uh, the the equity markets have been 
acting and the dollar yen has not been following the equity markets higher uh, as bond yields have been rallying the dollar yen has not been following it higher the dollar yen to me seems like a very broken currency from a correlation standpoint so if the dollar rallies i don't know if i would be thinking that the dollar yen rallies uh if, if the dollar rallies it might ignore be ignored in the dollar yen and it might so so you might see other yen pairs like the euro yen pound yen Aussie yen, New Zealand yen, Canadian yen, uh, Mexican peso yen. You might see all those other yen pairs fall. And then that would probably be complemented with some risk off in the stock market. So that that's just something that I want you guys to also think about going into next week. Last but not least, before I go through like what's happening next week, the event uh, calendar that's happening. One last thing I want to point, I want to bring your attention is gold. Um, Take a look at gold. Now, gold has been stubbornly strong. Uh, I'm going to actually go over to this weekly chart, and, and I'm going to take you actually over to, you can see it right here, but I'm going to I'm gonna draw one more line for you guys that's not on there. Uh, here's gold. Here's the week. And it's already drawn on my charts, but I want you guys to see it. Let me get rid of this, uh, this fib level here just to avoid confusion. You'll see this. See this trend line? I, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm you know, obviously moving it. If you drop that across the top there, that comes in around 1350. If gold should break out above 1350 and the dollar rally at the same time and bonds start to rally, then what you have to be careful of is is risk aversion. I think that's something that that is uh, it's something that is being overlooked when people look at correlations because so many correlations have been broken. But usually correlations break as markets be, get to a tipping point. And when I say markets get to a tipping point, we're, we're at a point in the stock market where it's so overbought, grossly overbought technically, and it's been rallying so hard for so long that, that correlations just has, have not been working, correlated markets. But they tend to re-correlate when markets snap back. They're like rubber bands. You know, you pull a rubber band too far back, it snaps back. Then those correlations jive again. And one of the things that I've always told our listeners for not only to the face webinars, but back when I did the daily webinars for the for the for Ally Financial, the Wise Trade Group, uh, you know, MB Trading in years past, one of the things I always explain to, to Forex traders is when you see the dollar rally, you see gold rally, and then you see bonds rally at the same time, that's a pretty good signal that stocks are probably going to be coming down. And um, I, I tend to look at that correlation. It, that, that's one that's a, a, a tried and true correlation um, because that, that just tells you that there's fear in the equity markets and then volatility tends to rise as well. But when, when all that happens at once, then the correlations tend to fall into place. And that's where, you know, listening to the daily webinars, being in the chat room with us in, in the Forex analytics chat room that, uh, by the way, if you don't know how to get there, if you're a user, you just click over here in the settings wheel. It says go to chat room. Um, being in there with myself and other traders that have been trading for years, because I'm I, we've got a lot of great traders in there, and, and I've been trading with some of those guys and gals for, for more than a decade, and we've been chatting together for more than a decade. So there's a lot of very sophisticated talent, individual traders in there that, um, you know, they, they look at these things as well. And, and when we're all, you know, humming the same tune, um, you know, that, that tends to, uh, it tends to, to, to be because correlations are starting to take hold. Just some things to pay attention to as we're going into next week. Now, speaking of next week, uh, I'm going to do this really quick for you guys. Uh, Tuesday, uh, or it's Monday night uh, here in North America, but uh, but Tuesday we have the BOJ and the BOJ uh, interest rate decision, and I'm sure that the BOJ might talk about how strong the yen has been because the yen has been abnormally strong in this environment, so uh, especially against the dollar, and we might we might uh, get a little. Um, uh, flavor on on trying to talk down the strength of the yen, but that's going to be Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning in 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 Japan or in Asia. Um, also next week uh, on Wednesday morning, early morning, we have a lot of European PMIs that are coming out. Uh, we also have UK 
uh, employment, which, by the way, I, you know, I have to point out the cable. The cable may have put in a reversal candle at the end of last week, but also keep in mind that we're at a 50%. Uh, well, you can't see it on this chart, but if you go from, um, well, actually you can. Uh, you go from, sorry, I had I was thinking something else here, from the 170 level, down to uh, down to the lows in uh, 2016, and that was the high in 2014. We're at the 38% retracement. Yeah, it's pretty pretty big, uh, make or break level for the cable. But we have employment data out of the UK, and the pound's been very strong, and the pound could continue to rally. Um, and and that's that's something that I, I definitely take into account every time I look at the pound is how strong it has been on this breakout. Um, anyway, we have UK employment on Wednesday uh, Wednesday morning. We have New Zealand inflation data Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning in New Zealand. Uh, on Thursday, we have Canadian retail sales. We have the ECB meeting, uh, which Mario Draghi may really try to talk down the euro because the euro has been obviously in breakout territory as well. And um, uh, on Friday, we have GDP out of the UK, we have uh, Canadian CPI, and GDP out of the, the US, and also core durable goods. And we do have uh, uh, Carney and Kuroda speaking later that evening. So a lot of stuff happening this week, and it's going to be a pretty important week to, to, to uh, be tuned in to our daily webinars. Uh, our face webinars where we we cover everything uh, in the FX market for an hour and a half free and we have great interviews and Dale Pinkert our, our esteemed host he uh, he brings in some great interviews every single week so make sure you listen to the face webinars um, and uh, guys and gals thank you for listening in this week I hope you have a great trading week next week and uh, be careful it's going to be a lot of volatility to kick us off uh, on Sunday evening so thank you very much for listening have a wonderful wonderful week